Welcome to Excel Business Math Series number 7. Hey, the workbook we're going to be using is Business 135, Chapter 00. If you want to download it, go to YouTube, user slash Excel is fun, scroll on down. There's my college website link, and at the very bottom here, control end, is the Business Math Series, uh, the workbook downloads. If you're in the class, just go ahead and download it from our class website. Hey, here we got to talk about the round function. We got to talk about rounding and formatting and how it's most assuredly the number one problem that people have in the business working world when it comes to Excel. Now, um, let's go ahead and just as we did in our last video, we created some formulas to calculate deductions. Here's our tax rate, 1.45. Here's our amounts. Let's click in this cell right here and type equals. And we'll get one cell to our left times. And now we'll click on B14. And we'll use our F4 key. As we saw in our last video, that dollar sign and that dollar sign means that this is locked. As we copy this formula down, the B7 will always look at the employee's gross pay one cell to my left. But this, with the dollar signs, will be locked. Control Enter. And then I'm going to click and drag down. Now I'm going to click in the last cell and hit F2. F2 is edit mode. Sure enough, it worked perfectly. Look at that. Uh, formula, one to my left, I mean, uh, cell reference one to my left times the uh, tax rate in B14. By the way, when you do copy formulas down, if you want to get them right, you always go to the bottom and uh, put it in edit mode and then see if it's still right. These colored boxes are actually called range finder, and they are really convenient and helpful to see if you got the right formula. I'm going to click Escape. Now let's add this up. Before we saw two different ways to do um, auto sum, I'm going to use the keyboard shortcut Alt equals. Alt equals. That puts in an equal sign, the function named sum, and then the range of cells. And if it's the dancing ants or dancing around the right ones, then hit Enter. Now, just imagine um, your boss comes in and uh, she's she's pretty mad, right? She looks up here and she says, "Look, I can do that math in my head. When you add up these numbers, it's not 377.22; it's 37.21." And she proves it to you. She grabs your mouse and she comes over here and she says, "Look, I see 74.12, so I'm going to type that in. Enter. I see 65.26, so I'm going to type that in. I see 91.36, so I'm going to type that in." I see 84.11. Remember, what you see in Excel is not always what's in the cell. You see 62.36, or she typed 62.36, enter. And then she didn't know the keyboard shortcut for AutoSum, and she saw you use it. So she goes, well, that was a pretty good keyboard shortcut. Let me try it. Alt equals. And she sees, she says, uh, forget it. You got the wrong answer. And immediately you remember from your business math class, you're like, oh, oh yeah, yeah, I forgot to use the round function. Let's see uh, w what's happening here. This is formatting. If you highlight this, and let's go to Control 1, there's accounting. Let's increase the desk. Uh oh, I'm already seeing trouble here. I'm seeing trouble. Uh oh, look at that. Yeah, look at that when we multiply decimals. This is a decimal. This is a decimal. If you multiply decimals, you can you are required to round when we're doing money to the penny. So all these extra uh, parts of pennies that are hanging out over here are not officially chopped off when you use formatting. Let me use the keyboard shortcut Control Z, or you can use your Undo Control Z. You see that? That 12, that 26, it just looks like it's 26. Underneath, there's still the unrounded number. I'm going to redo or control Y because we need a way, if we're going to do multiplying, because we are in this class going to do a lot of multiplying and dividing with uh, mostly amounts that are dollars and you're required to round. So we need to figure out a way to hack off all of these decimals. Let's click in the top cell and hit F2. It's quite simple. We're just going to officially round. And since we're rounding to the penny, notice there's a decimal 1, 2. Since that's the position you want, you you're going to have to tell the round function to round to that second position. So let's try it. You put your cursor between right after the equal sign but before your calculation and type round open parentheses. 
The screen tip is pretty helpful here. It says what number. Well, we already have our calculation. So then it reminds you you have to put a comma. Now, it's kind of dangerous to work here. It's probably safer to click up, click up here. I'm going to stay here because it's, it's easier to see. Comma. And this is where it says how many digits you want to round to. The trick I use to remember is I count the decimal one, two, and since that's a penny, I put a two there, and that's that's how it works. Um, and then you close parentheses and control enter. Immediately you can see that we have it formatted. This is not how you'd have it formatted on a sales invoice or something or, or payroll table, but we can see that the round function did its job. It got rid of all the extra decimals. I'm going to click and drag. And you, now you can see it got rid of all the decimals. There, it's actually got the right thing. So there it is. And it's probably the number one mistake in Excel on the planet Earth uh, when it comes to business. Here are the rules. When, uh, when, you're using, when you have to use the round function is when you're multiplying or dividing decimals, when you're required to round, because money requires that you round to the penny, right? Sometimes you're not required to round, so who cares? But when it's money, uh, and the third thing, when you'll be using the formula result in subsequent calculations. What does that mean? That means this. I'm going to control Z. Control Z. See, if we never added this up right here, who cares? I'm going to hit the delete key and then format this um, with control 1 and then just go back to two decimals. If all you're ever going to do is look at it and never do any calculations based on it, then it doesn't matter. You could just use formatting. But don't forget, underneath there's an unrounded number. So as soon as we have to uh, do a subsequent calculation like add, forget it. You're going to have to do the round function. That's it. I would uh, read this and memorize it. It's definitely one of the most troublesome uh, aspects of, of this class when people do calculations as we go through chapters and chapters and stuff, they're forgetting to do the round. Not only that, but lots of people in their jobs forget to use round and then they get into trouble. Their boss comes over and goes, that's not outing right. There it is, three simple rules and you will always figure out when to round correctly. All right, um, just an extra little thing. Um, if you're rounding to the penny, um, if I increase these decimals here, you can see if I'm rounding to the penny, I'm going to use a 2. So equals round. I'm going to click right there, comma 2. So it rounds, right? Now what if you wanted to round to the dollar? Guess what? Income taxes, you're rounding to the dollar. So when you have 1250 as an expense on your tax return, it actually is $13. Uh, let's try it. Equals round this, and you'd have to use a 0. That's just the way it is. The way I remember it is um, there's a decimal, 1, 2 to the penny. Well, if this is 2 and this is 1, that would make that 0. And so there it is. There's uh, 13. And finally, you can round to the thousands, which may, would mean uh, you got to pick your, we'll talk about this in great detail, rounding in chapter 1 and 2. But there it is. We want to round to that 8 right there. So equals round this number. And you'd have to use a minus 3, because if this is 0, 1, uh, minus 1, minus 2, minus 3. OK, uh, don't forget rounding these three rules. Don't forget them. All right, we'll see you next uh, chapter. That's the last video. Actually, one last thing. Since uh, this first chapter doesn't have any homework in the textbook, I've added some uh, extra sheets here for practice. You can practice doing this formula right here. You can practice doing some basic functions right here. You can practice doing your uh, absolute and relative cell references. And finally, I put some answers in here for each one of these three sheets also. All right, um, that was fun. Chapter uh, 00, Introduction to Excel for this business math class. See you next chapter.